Okay, in this video, we are going to look into building a very simple MIDI interface. Now, MIDI is pretty popular. It stands for Musical Instrument Digital Interface. And it allows two MIDI instruments to talk to each other or have a computer control a MIDI instrument. And that's what we're going to be doing in this video. I have a Scan3 board, which has a PicMica controller. And we'll be able to control a MIDI instrument through this 5 pinned in connector, which you can see mounted on my breadboard, and my two transistor interface. So if you have a keyboard synthesizer, it's probably MIDI controlled, and on the back you'll see a 5-pin DIN connector, or on the newer ones a USB connector. And then we could be able to control that with this setup. But in my case, I do not have a synthesizer keyboard. So I have a little oscillator that's MIDI controlled, where I could uh, control the attack, sustain, the, the delay, modulation, and pitch. So I'll be using that in this video. Okay, here's a musical instrument that I'll be using in this video. It's basically a MIDI controlled synthesizer. It's very simple. So on the back I have MIDI ports. There's my MIDI out and my MIDI in. So my SCAMP3 interface will be plugged into this port here and then I can control the synthesizer. Now you can get very powerful software to control the synthesizer but I won't be going into that. The purpose of this video is just to make a very simple MIDI interface where we could control the pitch and the note on and note off of any MIDI synthesizer. Okay, so the purpose of this video is just to build a very simple MIDI interface. So you could hook up other devices to your SCAMP3 board and come up with your own musical instrument. So here's a few examples. Here's a pressure sensor. So you could build a breath controller and have a force sensing resistor and a flex resistor. So we could control vibrato, modulation, pitch bend. I even have a time of flight detector here. So we could come up with a very simple theremin. Okay, here's an example of how we could use a force sensing resistor to use it as a trigger for a drum controller. Okay, next, here's an example of a flex sensor where we could use to trigger a drum controller. Okay, I have my MIDI interface up and running and it's connected to my synthesizer. Now the purpose of this video is to give you guys some ideas how you could come up with your own musical instruments using MIDI. So let's start out simple. We're going to look at a gate. So I'm going to gate on a note using my time of flight rain sensor. You can see it in my hand. So it's sending out a laser beam. So if I break the beam, it's going to gate a note on. So if I put my hand in front of it, note comes on, it releases it. So we could use that as a guitar string. Or we could pluck it. Okay, next, we're going to do some gating of the audio of the notes but we're going to increment a chromatic scale. Okay, next, I'm going to use my range sensor to measure the distance between the sensor and my hand to give me a C major scale. And I'll start out with my hand at the very right and I'll move it in. Okay, with my left hand controlling the pitch, my right hand can control the gating now for a song. So I'll demonstrate that. Okay, next, we are going to have a look at the MIDI messages that are sent to the MIDI instrument for control. And we send those messages using the TTL UART protocol at 31.250k baud. And each message will be three bytes. So we're going to look at those three bytes. So we have a status byte and we have two data bytes. Now the most significant bit of the status byte will be a one. And the most significant bit of the two data bytes will be zero. Now we look at those three bytes, the first byte, the status byte. The first four 
bits, that's a high nibble. That's our message type. So if it's a 9, that's note on. If it's an 8, that's note off. Now the second uh, a nibble, that's a lower nibble, from 0 to F, that's a channel number. Now each instrument has a channel number, so it's from 0 to F or 0 to 15. But if you talk to a musician, he calls it channel 1 to 16. So if he says my uh, instrument is on channel 1, we would code that as a 0. So our next byte is the pitch. That's the note that we'll actually will play. And if you think of a big piano, on the very left would be key number 0, that would be the lowest note. On the very right would be key number 127, that would be the highest note. But a piano only has 88 keys, so we would code that from 21 to 108. And the third byte is the velocity. That's how hard we hit the key, so that basically would be the volume. So to, to code the note on and note off, we send hex 90, that's note on, on channel 1. 60 would be middle C. 80 would be the velocity, that's note on. So if you would run that, the note would stay on forever until we run the second line. So hex 80, that's note off on channel 1, 60 is middle C, and 80 is the velocity. So if you want to code that on the SCAMP 3 board using fourth, we could use the, uh, the word TX1. So if we type any byte at the OK prompt and then type TX1, that will send that byte out UART1 pin. So hex 90, TX1, 60, TX1, 80, TX1 would turn on the uh, middle C, and then when we would write hex 80 TX1, 60 TX1, 80 TX1 will turn off the middle C key. So we're going to run this piece of code. This will be a simple piece of code to test out our uh, MIDI interface. Okay, here's some simple MIDI code running on the SCAM3 board. It's written in Flashforth. So look at the very top. We initialize the UART for 31.25 K baud. And then I have all my notes. So you see C1 there, that's middle C, 1 means on, and then C0 means middle C, and the 0 means off. So if we turn on middle C, this is what we're going to run. We're going to send these three bytes to the MIDI controller. So uh, hex 90, that means note on, 60 is middle C, 80 is velocity. So if I type C1, we'll get a note. Type C1, there's our note turns it on until I type C0 turns it off I could go D1 that would be note D D0 and so on you get the idea so that's very simple code that we send to the MIDI controller to activate uh, the C scale okay here's some code that will play the chromatic scale the 13 notes you can see it's a four next loop it's going to go through all 13 notes. So I'll type chromatic and hit enter, and we can hear the chromatic scale. Okay, here's some simple code that will run on the MIDI interface. And it's written in Flashforth, and it's running on the SCAM3 board. So the first thing we do, we have to initialize the UART to 31.25 K baud, so that's what that word does. Then I have words to turn on and off the notes for the C major scale. So there's middle C on, middle C off, and it goes all the way down to high C on and high C off. So we have an octave there. So that's all the coding for the notes on and off. And if we go further, question mark distance, when that runs it will take a measurement from my time of flight rain sensor and it will give you a distance in millimeters. And we use that for our scale. So with my hand moving back and forth, I could, I could activate the C scale. So it's called MIDI.scale. So the first thing we do, we initialize the UART. Then we go into a begin until loop. It's a continuous loop until we hit any key on the keyboard, then we'll come out of this loop. So what it's doing, it's reading the distance from the title, uh, time of flight range sensor. And if it's in between within 0 to 30, we're going to get C on. That's a note on. So every 3 centimeters... If you move your hand, we're going to get the next note. So from 30 to 60, if it's, if it's within uh, 30 to 60 millimeters, we'll get a D1, which is a D note on. That goes all the way up to uh, high C. And then when we move our hand to the next note, it's going to, it's going to take another distance reading. And it, it sees that we moved it, and then it's going to turn the note off. So there's C0 and B0, though it's a note off. So every, every time we move our hand, we're going to turn off the, the, the previous note and turn on the new note. 
And when we run this through, we're going to get the C major scale. Okay, here's a schematic diagram of the circuit that I built on my breadboard, my simple MIDI interface. And you can see all the components. There's my SCAMP3 board. Then I have two transistors. I have a PNP, an NPN, and a 5-pin female jack. I got online, and it's uh, breadboard friendly, so it plugs right into a breadboard, so it makes it very easy. Now the SCAMP3 board sends out the MIDI commands, out oh, TX1, that's the UART, which will turn on the PNP transistor. Now when the PNP transistor comes on, it's going to turn on the NPN transistor, which will drive the 5-pin female MIDI jack. Now on pins 4 and 5, inside the MIDI instrument, there's an optocoupler, and the LED is across pins 4 and 5. So when this NPN transistor comes on, it's going to energize the LED and send data into the MIDI instrument. So the 3.3 volts from the SCAMP3 board down here, it's fed up to the emitter of, the, of this transistor. And the plus 5 volts in the VN is fed up to the 5 volts here on this, on this resistor, which is feeding the LED on the optocoupler. So that's the circuit there, my little MIDI uh, interface for my MIDI controller. Okay, for testing and troubleshooting, the MIDI circuit interface, without anything plugged into the MIDI connector, you see there's nothing plugged in, I put an LED across pins 4 and 5 of the connector, and out on pin 4, and a cathode on pin 5, and this LED will, will simulate the optical coupler that's inside the MIDI instrument. So on the front, you can see the, the lettering, it's pins 4 and 5, so the corresponding back pins with this LED. Now if I send some data, I'll send some data, you can see the LED comes on, so now I know my circuit works. This LED is simulating the optical coupler inside the MIDI instrument. Okay, so that's my simple MIDI interface, which you could build. Now MIDI is very powerful, and if you have a a keyboard synthesizer, you can make it sound like a piano, a violin, a trumpet, or any type of instrument. So come up with your own ideas and build your own musical instrument.